Okay, down back again. I think I need to adjust the audio. Let me go to the desktop. The audio on uh, <clears throat> Cam 3, I think my gain is a little high. I've got the SM58 right where I want it. So I, I want to leave it there. <coughs> um, of course, that's all adjusted through the uh, Behringer mixer and V amp. Right here. Um, <coughs> so uh, the gains and well, I have compression, noise gate, and a little, little bit of reverb in in the V amp. Uh, the mixer just set flat and then set the gain, uh, the uh, the gain and the channel level to where I, you know, balance all that out. And and the main output the way I want it. And uh, <coughs> then I look in here and listen in here and see. Uh, Watch the meters and make sure I'm not getting too, you know, riding too high and uh, especially not clipping, you know. And, of course, you have to listen to know that for, sh uh, for sure. These uh, digital computer readouts are not, they're very, they vary widely in how they read out. Uh, and uh, you can't just go by them like you used to could. Uh, one analog meter was pretty darn close to another analog meter back in the good old days of analog audio. Uh, there's good, good and good and bad on both sides, but um, it is a, it's really a lot more tricky to do your balance, uh, to do your uh, balance your gains and all that stuff with a uh, uh, with a computer. Now, a digital mixer. Well, I've never, I think, I've never used. I'm, I, I guess I've never. I can't say I never touched a digital mixer, but I've never used a digital mixer. So my mixer right here is analog, but. Uh, <clears throat> um, once you get it into the computer, each program and each view, view meter in the program, you know, uh, they they will display it a bit differently. So the better they are, the better the program, you know, the more accurate it will be, and the more uh, like say if you have two good programs, you won't see a lot of difference if you jump from one program to another. Like a like say OBS is pretty good, so I think, and if you go to a DAW, uh, D A W digital. Audio workstation. Uh, the, then uh, there's one that I kind of like. I can't think of the name of it, but uh, then they won't be too far apart. <clears throat> but uh, and, and when I say that, I'm saying within probably two to five dB difference. So that's why, and some of them maybe ten dBs difference, and they're just not really usable, you know. And like say the built-in meter on the. Uh, uh, Never quite sure when you look in the sound preferences if you're looking at the ALSA interface or the Pulse Audio interface because they're both used in Fedora now. But if you look at the input, see, there's not even any numbers in there. And look at that. I'm talking, and look, I'm getting, uh, I'm going up to, uh, I'm jump, I'm pretty steady at negative 35 dB, and you're hardly even getting a readout here. Now, let's see. Built-in audio, monitor or built-in audio. That's the way I want it. So, uh, not sure why the level went away altogether. Usually, well, oh, I'm not saying anything. There we go. <laughs> yeah, if you stop talking, it stops giving them. So, see, that's almost unusable. Uh, it'll tell you whether or not you got signal. That's about it. Okay, so now to the. Um, I already kind of got in my head what I want to do, so I'm going to go to the advanced properties. Actually, you don't do it in the advanced properties. Well, I want to listen to it, so I'm going to get those open so that I can hear it, and, and I'm gonna, and it'll be in the video and everything as I do it. Okay, so um, I want to listen to it as I do it. <clears throat> Let's switch to the other mic. Let's switch to the other mic. Okay, now we're on the lapel mic, and I'm going to put it to where I can hear it. Okay, audio three, three, three. Check one, check two. one, two. Now let's turn, now off, let's the turn off the desktop audio, audio because that causes even more reverb. Actually, it might. I can't remember. Maybe it doesn't reverb at all if you turn that on. It sounds like a reverb to me because it's delayed a little bit when I hear it. Okay, now I want to go to... Um, Properties, regular properties. Then I can, no, that's not where I go, never mind. I'll go to the input over here in the sources, right click, and go to filters. That's the quickest way I know to get into there. 
Now I can see my noise gate, and I've got it. To, I might have to change it again, but I set it to uh, shut down, close the close shutdown at. Um, let me turn that volume down. It's driving me nuts. Um, I don't want to hear it right now. Anyway, the shutdown uh, level is negative 50 dB, and then the open threshold is negative 55 dB. But that's going to kind of the dynamics of that is going to change, or the the gain level is going to change. The gain level is changing, so that will change. So I think I need to go down uh, to about 2 dB to make them closer. So um, well, let's go ahead and listen to it and see what it sounds like. Check one, two. I'm going to close that so we can see the meter better. Check one, two. Hello, check. Let's listen to both of them at the same time. Let's listen to both of them at the same time. Check one, two. Hello, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. I think I'm pretty close. I think I'm pretty close. Okay. Okay, now, just the uh, lapel mic right now. Now we'll go just the SM58. Oh, I didn't turn on the monitor of the SM58. Okay. Now, check one, two. Hello, check. SM58. 58. Uh, lapel mic. Check one, two. Both of them. Hello, check one, two. Both of them. Hello, check, check one, two. two. Check one, two, SM58, check one, two. Most I'm hitting is 40. It's mostly thir around 30 to 35. Okay, now, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. And it's mostly, yeah, okay. I think that's the uh, compressor. Yeah, so I don't think I'll change the compression. I think it's going to be all right. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay. okay. Oh, now I'm getting a okay, little, getting a little, getting a little background, noise. Little background noise. That auto gain in the that phone may have, have actually, gained actually gained the. Gained that's another thing. That's another thing. The f the phone has an auto gain in it, you know, and I think it, I think it has a little compression built in. It could just be an automatic, ALC automatic level control. Whatever it is, it's there and it works fairly well, but uh, I was having a little, let me stop talking. Yeah, we're back to that just under negative 55 dB of background noise. And with my compression, I had got rid of that at seven uh, let's go back. Wrong one. Filters. Yeah, I had I had completely gotten rid of that. I'm surprised. I don't know me changing that. I don't think it. I mean, what I see this should be working still. Um, what I see in the levels there in the level of noise. Let me stop again. See, it's supposed to be shutting it down at 50 and opening at 55. Have I got it backwards again? I do that all the time. Let's see. Yes, I got it backwards. I had it backwards all along. I just didn't notice it a minute ago because I guess my gain. Yeah, so I want it to shut down at... 55 and open at probably about 50, maybe a little less than that. So I want it to shut down at 55. Check one, two, and see now that's just canceling itself out. 50. Check one, two. Check one, two. Yeah, now it's shutting it down. So I had actually done that wrong. That should be good, uh, as long as it's not cl clipping my first words, and I don't think it will, that should be good. And now my gain is 15. I th that's closer to what I, 
I was kind of thinking I was somewhere between 12 and 15, maybe 16 to be gained before when I had this camera. But that was the old mic, the sauce mic. This is a new one. I gotta look and see what mic that is. <clears throat> I can't remember the name of it or anything. I have the bag for it up there. Let me see. <clears throat> ah, this is a pop voice. I'll show the bag in a minute. I was thinking I'd have to go go look where I ordered it, but okay. So I'm gonna leave that at close at 55, open at 50, and I actually had that backwards. I can do that. I always have trouble with getting that backwards in my head. Now, I don't know if that was sounding echoey. So we'll turn off the monitors and kind of check it out a little more. Okay, well, before I do that, let's go to the camera. Okay, now this is what I'm talking on right now. Uh, it's a little bag that it came with it. It's called Pop Voice. And it is a, it's not a stereo lapel. It's dual, just dual lapels. And um, it's, um, sounds better than my um, sauce mic. I call it sauce. It's, it's just S E A U C something. I can see the bag back up there. And yeah, there we go. Pop voice. That's what that one's called. But it's um, get this out of the way. See, it's two mic heads going down into a mono uh, connector, um, and you can <clears throat> uh, well, you can tell by the wiring by looking at it. But it also tells you that when you look at it on. I got it on Amazon. But they are do both work, Sep you know, separately. And the idea behind them is so that you can, uh, so they have 16 foot cables, and, and the idea is that you would plug it into wherever you're going to record, and uh, then put one on yourself and one on a, a guest, you know, another person. You could do that, or sometimes what I do is I wear them both, and it actually that may be why the sound is better. Uh, but they do have a, I read some. They said that, and then I went and kind of looked it up. And uh, actually, well, I looked it up and I didn't find a lot, but uh, they have a bigger capsule, a bigger head on them than the, that uh, sauce mic. I know, I know, set right away, and I thought, well, I don't know if I like that. But uh, just the other day, I was watching a how microphones are designed video by uh, it was on EEV blog. Dave Jones, I just I really love watching his videos. He he's always. Don't, don't don't turn it on, take it apart, it's his motto. You know, he takes apart electronics and tells you he's an electronics engineer and has been for over 35 years or something. And so he tells you what all the parts are and what he thinks of them and whether he likes them or not. But he had a guest on there, and he was the guy that designed a bunch of the EV mics in the last 20 years, 20, 25 years. Uh, not EV uh, now I forgot the brand, but anyway, he's worked for a few different companies, and he has his own company now. But uh, he—he's an—he's uh, not—he's an electronics engineer, but he is an audio mic designer. You know, he's an audio engineer. Um, well, he was—I could tell by—he was talking about mixing sound for bands. So he was an audio engineer first. It sounds like back in the good old days. <laughs> he's older than me, I think, or he's my age or older. It sounded like he was mixing before I was. I started really doing like I mixed. Most weekends for about 12 years from the ni uh, early 90s to, to about 2000. And, uh, well, from the late... Well, I actually started mixing and learning to mix in 1983, but I was just wasn't doing it all the time, and I wasn't doing bands. Um, but he was mixing for... He's, they're Australian, so he was mixing for the band he mentioned I didn't ever heard of, but evidently they were a big band, uh, you know, out there back in the day. And uh, but I could just tell by the way he was talking, he was mixing big shows. So uh, I was a sound guy, he was an audio engineer. <clears throat> so, <laughs> um, let me see. Um, so, anyway, okay, now we've talked and talked on here. Let's go to the SM58. That was both of them for a second there. All right, now we'll go back and forth. Now, there's the SM58. Getting the wrong thing there. Let me turn that desktop audio just to make sure I don't forget. The desktop audio is back on. Okay, now then. Back on. Okay, There's now both then. of them right there for a second. There's both of them right there for a second. Uh, uh, lapel mic. 
Check one, two, hello, check. Check one, two, hello, check, 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 check. Check one, two, hello, check, 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 check. It's harder to use the meter. Oh, I wasn't showing the meter. It's harder to use the meter because the, uh, the well, the compressor is better uh, in, in going through the V-amp. And the, uh, in the V-amp, too, it's a better compressor. It's more responsive and shuts the signal down quicker than the one in the oh, Opus Studio. It's great that it has it. It works pretty well. I notice it's quicker. <clears throat> in the uh, and I don't think you can set the you can't set the you saw in there a minute ago you can't set the attack rate or, or decay oh yes you can I say it's better and I'm just going with the default you can just set the attack and delay and everything in there I mean decay sure can that's the noise gate but see you can do the attack the hold and the release time oh I don't have the compressor turned on I don't have a compressor set up that would be the <laughs> I'm talking about compression, and I don't even have it turned on. That's the noise gate, and I just left it on the defaults because usually with these programs, they're pretty good. If you start having a problem, then I start trying to fix it. You know, but if you fix it, if it ain't broke, you easily broke it. So yeah, I don't have the reason I don't have two reasons I don't have the uh, compression turned on on the lapel because I've been using it with the other the sauce lapel mic for a couple of years now, and I don't really need it because of the built-in. Uh, uh, automatic level control or uh, compression that there's no noise gate in in the phone I know but I'm talking about the phone now but there is a, either an ALC or, or a compression built in there and an auto gain in the phone uh, like if you get too loud it'll try to shut it down if you're not loud enough it'll try to bring it up so I would really call it an ALC uh, it doesn't act like a real compressor because uh, let's get back on there uh, let's get back on there and I'll show you okay Oh, huh? Don't make a liar out of me. Check one, two. I was doing pretty good. Uh, wasn't when I had it on 17 uh, dB gain. That's the other factor is I'm gaining the signal. When you start gaining the signal externally from your device that controls your mic, you know, the one you're inputting the signal to, and then you down the line, I'm sending it over the Wi-Fi to the computer, and then you gain it. Well, that signal gets a lot more... Uh, it's somewhere it's it gets hot hotter too hot too quick easily so you got to watch when you when you when you i needed to gain the signal because it was just way too low to match it up to the sm58 because i didn't want to take the sm58 any lower than it is but you got then you get a background noise now i'm on the sm58 see i'm actually getting up into the red easier right now so it's just the way i've got it set so it's just the way i've got it set right now while ago, well, it's about the same, and that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, now I see it hitting the red. And I saw it. it, it it's kind of neat because it has a telltale. shows you the highest thing you had. It was uh, plus 5. <clears throat> now, wait. It's not getting to 0 dB. That's negative 5. The red zone is just watch out. You're beginning. You're getting, you're getting into, well, in, on digital, like we are right now, usually... Anything in the red zone here is about, well, it's it's getting loud enough. It's almost beginning to sound distorted. If you get, if you start getting above negative 5 dB, it sounds distorted. Now, that's exactly, that's 5 dB different than with analog recording gear. You could usually go 5 dB above 0 dB. I think I said 100 dB. Um, or a while ago when I meant 0 dB. Um, anyway, 100 dB... Yeah, we won't go there. Uh, it gets confusing because, like, when you're measuring sound in a room, you go by, it makes sense. It's all, you know, it's positive numbers, not negative numbers. And you you start out at, one, you know, 0 dB, and you work your way up to, you know, typically concerts uh, do run between 90 and 120. So I've, I've heard stories of them running 125 dB. I've, uh, let's see, where did I? I have seen, I never carry, I never owned a, a decibel meter, but uh, I've seen people, I had somebody bring one into a concert one time, and they stuck it up in the speakers. Now I can't remember, this was back in 90, 91 or 2, I don't know, early 90s. They were saying we were too loud, you know, they were complaining. And um, um, they stuck it right up in the speakers. Well, of course it's going to be louder right at the speaker 
you, you put it, you know, you measure it in the room where the people are at, you know. Not <laughs> by jamming it up in the speaker, but I don't know. It was 100 and over 100 EV, 110 maybe, I don't know. But, uh, <coughs> I mean, you, <laughs> if you stuck the, your earbuds on there, you'd probably be able to get over 100 EV, you know, uh, on one of those meters. But if you move it away, it quickly changes, doesn't it? So, uh, <clears throat> anyway. Um, I back hope about where I really want it for my recordings. Well, when you have to go back and reset things up, um, of course, buying a new mic made me, uh, I had to reset it up because of that, but I also had stopped using my camera three at all because of the battery had started swelling and I thought it was going to be too dangerous to use. And I, I kind of, I'd read about batteries, you know, all different kinds of battery tech for years, but. You know, it gets kind of fuzzy in my head, all the different kinds of batteries. So I went back and reread, and I decided, as long as it was swelled, I wasn't going to keep on charging it. But uh, So I took it out, and I put it in a can sitting on top of my TRS-80, and uh, a coffee can, a metal coffee can. And uh, I sat there about a month, and it finally went down. <coughs> and uh, I didn't, you don't want to puncture the bag or anything. <coughs> And then uh, I tried it again, and it was actually it was working fine, and, and it was actually holding the charge longer than some of these other batteries. And since then, it's been a few months, and really they're all swelling a little bit. What I think had happened with it is, uh, let's see, well, that phone is the one I'm using right now, so I can't show it or anything. I can't really show any of them because <clears throat> the way the cameras are set up. But uh, it... Um, It's the one I keep in the bag all the time. Well, I usually kept the bag zipped uh, pretty well. You know, I might leave it cracked about that an inch. Sometimes I'd forget and zip it all the way, and it'd be sitting up there on my TRS-80 computer. It's right there, and uh, <clears throat> plugged in and charging. And what I have the chargers plugged into the phones. I can't. The phones will run down doing video for within 10 minutes, you know, so I have to keep them plugged into the chargers to use them. And so I keep... I just keep the chargers plugged in and I have them all plugged into a power strip that I turn on and off each, turn it off at night and turn it on when I get up. And you won't, you don't have to worry about overcharging them because they have uh, battery, BMS, battery, battery management systems built into them. I have for years now and these phones do and they, they turn off the charging. But, and it, it hasn't been a problem with any of them but that one and that phone, I do not know why it is, does that, but uh, does this. With that phone, sometimes it would, uh, whenever you would turn the power on or when you'd reboot it, I noticed it when I was rebooting it, and I think what was happening is sometimes when you turn the power on, it would cause it to try to boot up, but it would it would not boot up or go into charge, you know, just like you know, displaying the battery charging mode like it should it would go into a little screen that would say it was a reset screen. And when it's in the reset screen, I noticed it would get hot. Every time I'd find it that way, it was hot. Well, when they're getting hot like that, it means usually means they're overcharging. And it had gotten to happen more and more often. <clears throat> and so what I'm, I'm pretty sure happened, I'm almost certain happened, is it, it, would, it would be in that uh, reset screen, and the BMS is the, uh, the software that controls the BMS is not on when it's in that reset screen. It's like a real basic mode. So it was just getting full charge all the time. And I wouldn't know it, you know, for hours and hours. And, and so maybe it would run. I remember about the time that battery started swelling, I didn't look at those phones every day. I only used to look at them when I wanted to make a video. And so there might be a couple of three days I would be sitting there and it's all the powers to it. And it should just be being charged if it needed or the charging turns off automatically if it doesn't need it. Well, it would get hung in that reset screen, and the only way I could usually get out of that most of the time, well, half the time, was to take the battery out of the thing. Because if you just tried to do the button, like do the buttons the way it tells you to do, it would just go back into that screen again. So, uh, and it's the only phone that ever has ever done that, out of these three identical Alcatel A845L phones. Uh, so anyway, I think that's what caused it to swell up. But once... Um, actually, I don't know if I've seen it go into that screen since then, 
but uh, once I left the battery, like I said, once I left the battery out of it, it took, it was about a month before I noticed it significantly swelling going down. And I'm sure because, you know, that bag sealed pretty well that the phone's in, and it just took that long for it to seep out of there. It's, hyd- it's a, yeah, hydrogen, I think, that's being built up in there when they uh, when they begin to, they call it outgassing, you know. Um, <clears throat> that's one thing that happens when they're getting overcharged is they start, which I think it's hydrogen, but uh, they start putting out, uh, you know, enough hydrogen to swell that bag up. And, but like I said, they're getting old, and when batteries get old, they start outgassing more. Uh, they begin to outgas, and then you know, as I've seen that as they get, um, you've seen it all, you know from reading and other people's batteries once or twice. Uh, the older when they get old, they begin to do that more, so they're all swelling just a little bit. At first, I thought that was definitely really dangerous thing, and I thought, oh, I'm not going to ever touch that, use that battery again. But the more I read up on it and watched videos, I, re- I found out that it's. It's not necessary. You, you, well, don't take my advice. I'm telling you what I heard, you know. But uh, if it's not real, real bad, if it's not uh, continually getting larger and larger, then and as long as your charging system is work seems to be working right and everything, like, like I said, uh, <clears throat> then and then they probably be alright for a while longer. I don't know how much longer in a few months now for me but i'm off on it's, it's all tied together in my brain because this is the phone the camera three that i'm using for my lapel mics uh to send my lapel plugs into it goes over the wi-fi back to the desktop that i'm str- gonna stream from all right now i'm just making a video but so anyway <clears throat> back to anyway camera three back to camera three check one two Hello, check. Hello, check. Yep, goes back. Yeah, and if I just is what I'm one other thing I'm worried about is it, if it I don't want it to cut off my beginning of my sentence or beginning of my first word. Hello, check. Hello, hello. Well, now I didn't talk very loud that time, and it, <clears throat> but I don't. The noise gets up almost to 50 dB. Negative 55. Yeah, 55. Negative 55. Well, it's shut off now, but it was a while ago. Yeah. So I've got it set at negative 55. I really, if I set it lower than that, then, it, you know, it would be picking up noise, and I don't want noise. So I don't think it's going to. Sh- well, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> so uh, I think we're all set now. Let's let's go. Uh, let's just go check all of our cameras again. It's been a while since oh, I'm back on my. Forgot I, I meant to be on the desktop just now. Okay, there's desktop on the SM58. And uh, resource usage looks good. Cam one, cam two, one and two, one in desktop, two in desktop, in the scope. There's my pop voice bag there and that was cam one and two on endoscope now we'll go back to the now we'll go back to the lapel mic again <clears throat> test it and uh, video I'm making this one's turning out longer than the previous one okay and then <clears throat> that was cam two that's just aimed at the monitor I meant to go to cam one Cam one, cam two, one and two, one in desktop, cam two in desktop, 10 inch tablets not turned on, endoscope, endoscope and cam one, endoscope and cam two. Switch to the SM58, back on the SM58, and I'll play my music out, and hopefully I will actually be ready to make my actual video. Mm-hmm.